Hey everyone, welcome to the first episode of Coffee Talk, a podcast where in between sips, your Catholic questions are answered. I'm your host, Father Brad Doyle, and I have with me our resident good Catholics, Peter Gone and Alex Mersh. Hey, how are you doing, guys? Hey, we're doing good. We're doing good. How are you doing, Father? Fantastic. Got my coffee here and a, a mug that my friends, the Fossiers, gave me, and it has chant notation, but... I'm I'm partial to things that have chant notation with not chant. I words. had a feeling it wasn't going to be uh, at the Tantu Mergo. No, no, no. It got? says, "Out of the depths, I have cried for coffee." <laughs> and I think it's an actual like, "Out of the depths, I cried to you, O Lord." I think it's right. an actual chant notation for that, but obviously for coffee. And um, so, yeah, here we are, Coffee Talk, a new podcast. And uh, why don't you? Uh, Peter, why don't you kind of just fill ev- all the listeners in? Like, what is this podcast about? What are we going to be doing? All right. So it's pretty simple. We're here just sipping on our coffee, hanging out, but we're here to uh, give, well, Father's here to give his wisdom <laughs> about the spiritual life and to answer. You're going to have some wisdom. Though. I'll, I'll chime in where we're applicable, but I'm not going to sit up on my high horse with my Roman collar because I don't have one. All right. Um, so we're just going to answer your questions, whether it's about something going on in your life that you need a little bit of help with, whether it's uh, Catholic beliefs that you don't understand or are wrestling with, or really anything under the sun, we're here to answer your questions. So if you ever wanted to be able to sit down uh, with a Catholic priest and some other guy, now's your chance. So that's what Coffee Talk is going to be. um, Simple, not too complicated, hopefully just just enough time for your commute to work, uh, just getting some Catholic answers. Um, but in, in this first section, this first segment is usually going to be kind of us catching up, maybe a little banter, maybe a little feedback from listeners, emails we receive from listeners, um, just interaction with, with the listener base. Uh, but since we don't have that, I just say, give me a little update in your life, man. Oh, What's been dude, going on? It's been busy since I last saw you. I mean, aside from the whole uh, this little pandemic thing happening, I don't know if you heard, you know, so that it's been keeping me, keeping me a little busy. Uh, I think I saw a tweet about it the other yeah, day. Yeah, one or but, two. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, but other than that, uh, my wife and I welcomed our first child into the world, little baby James. NBD, NBD. <laughs> and he's, he's about three months old now. He's fantastic and blessedly. At least this week, he's sleeping through the night. So all is well in the world when I get a full night of sleep. That's it. You you actually probably need coffee more than me as a <laughs> as a new a new dad. So well, I mean, I drink uh, coffee around the clock to begin with. So yeah, me too. That's why I'm dehydrated. Anyway, enough of that. <laughs> um, yeah, things are going well in Louisiana. By the way, listeners, I'm a priest of the Diocese of Baton Rouge in Louisiana. Uh, my family is from New Orleans, and so there's just a lot of roots, South Louisiana, very Catholic culture down here. I love it. Um, right now, we're just kind of mourning the loss of Mardi Gras due to COVID. Um, yeah. It's our, our first Mardi Gras we haven't been able to have, I think, since Mardi Gras started in like the 1800s. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe during the World Wars. I, I'm sure I, I could probably do that research. But but uh, yeah, we're not no parades. Uh, people are getting together with family and stuff like that. But um, it's kind of sad, man. It's kind of yeah. sad. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. I was going to ask about it. So that's going to be next week. But yeah, it's uh, Fat Tuesday, the day before uh, Ash Wednesday is Mardi Gras, and then a lot of French and Spanish cultures, uh, carnival season. Right. It's it's just parades, parties, food, family. A lot of people see it as debauchery, but they just see the commercialized part. You know, that'd be think it that would be like thinking uh Christmas was just you about know, shopping or something, yeah. Just shopping or just like Coca Cola Santa, you know. <laughs> it's like, oh that's a little a <laughs> little bit deeper than that. Yeah. Um so that's what we're dealing with here, just doing our thing, saying mass, uh, a lot of anointings uh mm. this past year, sadly, but but it's actually a part of my ministry that I wasn't really that pumped about going into priesthood, but since for a big, huge chunk of time, that was really all I could do publicly with the mm. faithful was go to the hospital and do anointings and be with people. And um, so it's the Lord's kind of given me that as a blessing that I'm able to, atta- uh, I guess, 
dive in a little bit deeper into that ministry of anointing of the sick and being with families mm-hmm. at people's last last moments here on earth. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you from a layman's perspective, the anointing of the sick, not that I've had to receive it, thanks be to God, but um, it's such a comfort to families, you know, such a comfort to the loved ones even of, aside from the the anointee, the person receiving the grace and actually receiving that huge infusion of, of God's mercy and uh, God's blessing. But it's a huge blessing that when someone you love is maybe near death or even just very ill and you don't know what the future holds to, to know that, oh, but don't worry, they got the sacraments. The priest came, you know, she was anointed, he was anointed. Yeah. It's such a huge yeah, like blessing. So The Lord gives, he wants to meet us not just in happy times, but in in the times when we're in the valley of death, you know, yeah. and, um, and he's, he's always there. So, so power to you, father, for, for going there and bringing that to folks. Thanks, man. Hey, what you sipping on? What, what, what kind of coffee? I'm sipping is on that? some cheap iced coffee that I got on my way in today. Classy. So, yeah. It's, uh, it's not great. Not going to lie, but uh, it's getting the job done. So I'm happy. And a, a black tumbler. Yeah. So here at the office, um, we sometimes get the rejects from our personalization or, uh, our manufacturing. So this has, What's supposed to be a little morning prayer as part of their coffee tumbler, but it's misprinted. So that means I get to use it. That is epic (laughs) typo. (laughs) Um, Cool. Awesome. Well, uh, I think it's time, you know, I got my coffee. I got my caffeine fix. I'm ready to answer some questions in our next segment, which is what's percolating. What's percolating is a segment where the questions percolating in your head get answers from the church's tradition. So, Peter, feed me. What have people been asking? What are we going to try to answer uh, by the grace of the Holy Spirit through the church's tradition? All right. So our first question today comes from Karina from YouTube, and she asks, how can I overcome guilt that haunts me? Thanks for starting off with like a very intense one, you know, like there was no easing <laughs> Father Brad into coffee talk. Nope. <laughs> no, hey, but people, uh, people got questions. It's on their minds, that, right? That's true. And we're going to answer it. So first, first and foremost, uh, Karina, I want to thank you uh, for asking this question and being so vulnerable. And, and the first thing I want to say, um, as I prayed about this, the Lord put on my heart that to say that you're loved by the Lord and no matter what you've done or what's. Uh, what you happened to you um, or what you've experienced that has gotten you to this point where you feel that much guilt. Um, your identity is not in those other things, right? What you've done or what's happened to you, but um, your identity is as a beloved daughter. And I think that's first and foremost, because we have to start from identity um, and then we can move forward into our mission and what God's calling us to. So just starting there, I wanted to start there. And secondly, I do want to make the distinction uh, between guilt and shame. And obviously, Peter, you can like pop right in there. You can raise your yeah. hand and like say things. But I want to make the distinction between guilt and shame. Um, so shame is not really helpful uh, because shame tends to make us turn in on ourselves and to identify, like I was saying earlier, we got to identify as a beloved daughter or son. Um, shame makes us identified with the things we've done. Um, this is actually why I have a, problem with the term Catholic guilt, because I think most of the time when people say Catholic guilt, you know, there's a trope out there where, yeah. where it's like, oh yeah, I grew up Catholic. I have Catholic guilt or I'm Italian. I got Italian Catholic guilt or Irish Catholic yep, guilt. Yep, I'm, yep. I'm Doyle, right? Um, I don't think they're talking so much about Catholic guilt as they are about Catholic shame, which is something different. Yeah. Right. And sure. so, and so I want, uh, Karina, I want to make that distinction with you that um, there's a difference between shame and guilt and shame isn't really helpful, right? But guilt on the other hand can be helpful because we are sometimes guilty, (laughs) you know, like (laughs) sometimes we do need to feel guilt and this feeling of guilt should push us forward to find forgiveness. So while shame isn't helpful, guilt, there's a purpose for it. Like it's a response to maybe something we've done and then we need to seek out forgiveness. The example I came up with, Peter, was feeling hungry. The feeling of hunger urges us on to something. Like, it's not the end. Yeah, like it propels not, us to seek out the, what we need. Exactly. Right. It's not the It's not the end. It's not the purpose. It's not where we're going to end up. Like, 
you it is a means to get us somewhere and that somewhere is the fridge I mean, yeah, but really just to, to, you know, to eat because we need that. And so guilt, um, while we don't want to end there, that's not the goal to end there. We actually want to let it propel us towards reconciliation. Yeah. So like in, guilt is just like your conscience poking you. Like it can be a good thing, right? You feel guilty about doing something bad because you did something bad. And so you need, you recognize that you need forgiveness or you need help or you need to, you need to come clean or, or you know, whatever the situation might be. And that can, that can be a good thing that can then lead to healing that can lead to reconciliation that can lead to peace and joy and just sort of being able to move on. So it's a, it's not a guilt properly understood Mm -hmm. as distinct from shame. Absolutely. is is a good thing. And it's a gift from God, even though it doesn't feel like it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, yeah, sometimes gifts are hard, you know, so maybe the Lord's given us something and and maybe Karina, you, um, I think, what stands out, Karina, to your question was that 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 haunts me. The part yeah. that kind of stood out was like that haunts me. And so the first thing I would say to you and to anyone who might feel the same way um, is think about going to confession. If you haven't been to confession or reconciliation, another word for it, confession is what you do. Reconciliation is what happens. Um, reconcile with those around you and reconcile with the Lord. And so the Lord gave us a tangible means of removing guilt right and that is reconciliation and and he gave it to us through the church he said to peter you are rocking on this rock i'll build my church and the gates of the netherworld will not prevail against it who sends you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and who sends you loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven so karina if you have a sin that's that's haunting you right it's not really the guilt that could be haunting you maybe it's maybe it's a sin well guess what there's hope there's good news right and for everyone anyone listening out there there's good news you can be forgiven. I mean, I, I think most people have dealt with this on, on some level, but this is something that I've had to overcome in my life. I'm just personally, my, my personality leads me to kind of introspection and then I overthink things and then I can get really like down on myself and um, ask my wife, I'm down on myself a, a lot or I'm just generally pessimistic. So I get the whole like haunting shame, haunting guilt. Um, and it's it's like you need to understand what guilt is and what shame is. And like guilt is kind of external to you and that like you are guilty or you're not whether or not you feel guilty or not you know oh, like yeah, that's true Good like point. a murderer can repent and feel guilty or not doesn't change whether or not he's a murderer you know like he can be convicted and be unrepentant and still go to prison because he's guilty um whereas you can feel shame for something even little even if someone's like, oh, it's not a problem, or I, I totally, I, we've forgiven each other, and there's been, you know, reconciliation there, you know, between you and someone else, but you still feel bad about it. Like, shame is almost an emotion, something you feel, whereas guilt, you might feel it, but you might not. It's almost like a, this, it's like a metaphysical thing, yeah, right? It's a state of, uh, of yeah, it's being, a sta- it's a state, it's a state of, of your soul. Yeah, yeah, or state of the world, that's a good way to think about it. It's, it's a state of things, um, and through confession you can know whether or not you are forgiven because you can have faith and believe that, okay, this priest is acting in the person of Christ and Christ has the power to forgive me and Christ has forgiven me. So I know that I no longer haven't incurred that guilt. I might still feel pretty terrible. I sometimes be feeling that shame and you kind of have to work through that and you have to pray through that. But you can know, at least on paper, or at least know in your head, even if you still wrestle with it in your heart, that you've been forgiven through confession. And that's what I think is so beautiful about it, being able to kind of rely on that first, even if you're still kind of wrestling with the emotions and you still need to can keep working through that and try to let go of that and give that over to the Lord and you know let him forgive you and let him give you his mercy. Um, but separating those out and like believing it, even if you don't feel it, can help. Yeah. One thing I say whenever, after I shrive somebody, <laughs> after I forgive them, after I absolve them, um, or, or right actually before I absolve them, like someone will say, you know, say their sins. And then one of the first things I say is, and you will be forgiven of those sins. 
I don't know. I just found, I think priests find their rhythm with like sacraments yeah. and they have their things they say. Right. And, and one of the things that I just want to say to people after they go to confession, they say, this is what I've done for all the things that I remember in the past that I don't remember. I'll say, you will be forgiven of those things. And, and, and it's not like this over emotional thing. It's like, it is the case, right? This is going to happen. And, um, so it's not like, Oh, and you'll feel really good about being forgiven or you, right. uh, won't, you know, or whatever. Right. It's not about emotions. It's not about a feeling. There's a, there's a reality outside of yourself that affects yourself and it's the forgiveness of your sins. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's really good distinction. Um, and so uh, Karina, yeah. Go to confession, and if you've gone to confession, but here's the deal. Maybe she's gone to confession, she's like, but it still haunts me. And that's mm -hmm. why I wanted to talk about the temporal effects due to sin. Yeah, let's get into um, that. So the analogy that was always told to me, or that I heard once, that always stuck with me, and this is how I talk about it. Um, if, if you are a two-by-four, like a piece of wood, two-by-four, and sin is like a nail that's driven into the two by four. Okay. Ouch. Right. Confession is removing that nail. So the guilt is removed. The sin is no longer there. It does not mean that the effects, the temporal effects due to sin do not still remain. There's still a hole. Right. And so this is what penance and almsgiving this is the penance part of confession, right? This is why you do penance, to heal relationships, right? Heal broken trust. Fill in the hole. This is purgation. Um, this is also what the analogy I use whenever I talk about purgatory is because even though we might not have guilt, sin has affected us and affected how receptive we are or um, our relationships. And so sometimes those holes need to be filled in. So it's not just a matter of going to confession, it could be a matter of, you know, doing penance, not in a masochistic way, like ah, I'm yeah, going to need to suffer. Myself. Yeah, it's not, it's, that's not how it works. Yeah, so so I would I would say that just prayer. So maybe maybe adding um, like an extra prayer. Like if you don't read the gospel every day, um, I would say just wake up in the morning, pray in the morning. If, if you're not, if you don't have a consistent prayer life, um, do it in the morning because it's, it, it affects the rest of your day. Read the gospel for today or for each day. Um, and it will kind of give you a path to go for the rest of your day. Um, so a prayer almsgiving, right? Give to charity. Um, and then penance, make a sacrifice. So um, pick a, a special charity that you want to give to for a little bit. Um, make a sacrifice. So give up something. One one cool idea is to give up like ice and drinks. Like if you like go into the restaurant and you're going to get a Coke or something, um, don't put ice in it. An iceless Coke. Ah. <laughs> It doesn't. I know it sounds ridiculous now, but it's just kind of like. But, and but then looking your for those little things to kind of give up or to, to offer up. I mean, that also just builds really good habits, you know. Yeah, yeah it not, makes not you less likely to complain it. about other things that go wrong or let small things ruin your day. If you're used to kind of giving up those little little sufferings. Absolutely. So, Karina, I hope you find through confession the forgiveness you seek. And if you've already gone to confession, I um, do want you to um, be able to to find peace with the Lord. Oh, and last thing, sorry, Karina, I also want to recognize that we as Catholics believe in a body soul unity. We're a body soul unity. Right? We're not parts. Like we are our body and we are our soul. Right. And so physical imbalances or even hormonal imbalances can affect our psyche. And actually the, the term psyche is Greek for soul. Right? <laughs> so whenever we talk about psyche, like our psyche, like psychology, mm -hmm. it's not like a, a rejection of the soul. It's like it, that is talking about our soul. And so um, there is a situation where we don't want to over-spiritualize things. Sometimes there might be a, uh, you know, a psychological imbalance or a, a hormonal imbalance or maybe someone needs counseling. Like we need to be open to these things that, that um, maybe are more medical or more um, clinical. Uh, and it's not in opposition to the spiritual. Yeah, yeah we live in a faith I, of both and. 
right? We're both body and soul, right? We need to take care of our, our bodies. We need to take care of our minds and our, our soul. And it's not just like, oh, if you're dealing with the stuff or you're feeling, um, I don't know if you're feeling depressed, whether it's kind of a capital D clinical thing or you're just kind of in a rut. It's not like, oh, just go to confession, then you'll feel better. Nor is it just like get a prescription and go to a counselor. It's like do what you need to do for both. Take care of your soul. Take care of your body. If you need to see a doctor, see a doctor. If you need to see a professional, you know, health uh, psychologist or um, health professional, then do that. You know, it's if both you need and. to see a priest, see, see a, a priest. priest. <laughs> um, and and I do recognize that, um, and I think every priest has this experience that we see people who struggle with scrupulosity. Mm-hmm. And um, one way it was put to me was that scrupulosity is a spiritualization of obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, right. So obsessive compulsive disorder is like this um, feeling that you need to do something a certain way um, in order to to for it to be complete. Right. Opening a door multiple times or washing your hands over and over. And this is a major suffering that people have. Mm -hmm. Um, We'll spiritualize that. And that is scrupulosity, um, which is also can be just as painful. So there might be people out there. I'm not saying this necessarily about you, Karina, but. There might be people out there who suffer with scrupulosity and don't know it or think they're weird or think they're unfaithful because of that. And that is not true. Remember, our first principle is your identity in as a beloved son or daughter and then being open to the sacraments of the church, confession, prayer, almsgiving, penance, um, and then also the, the maybe the more clinical route if that's what's necessary and I think just just present this to to your pastor and um, hopefully he can guide you in the right direction well that's all I got on that um, let's take a break and when we come back we'll go to the bean of the week and I'll explain what the bean of the week is because it just sounds kind of weird when I just say I'll go to the bean of the week but you don't know what it is but you're going to know when we come back in a second And we're back, and it's time for the Bean of the Week. Everybody needs a little pick-me-up, and here is ours. The Bean of the Week is a segment where me and Peter and maybe Alex, if we can get him to talk, you there? I am here. Ah, It's the first time he's spoken. Um, I don't know if you prepared a bean of the week. Anyway, so it's it's something that picked us up, something that's helping us, something that we want to highlight. It's kind of a pick of the week kind of thing. Um, so Peter, what's your bean of the week? So my bean of the week is, I, I feel like I'm cheating because I'm saying the Bible, um, but I'm being much more specific than that. I'm talking about- <laughs> You're like the kid in, in middle school who's oh, yeah. like, Jesus is the answer. Is the Jesus. answer. Yeah. No, um, in particular, no, one edition of the Bible, the Catholic- Reader's Bible. I think it's from Sophia Institute Press. Not sure. Um, I'll link it in this show notes so you can look it up if you want. But the reason I like it is because it is meant to be read like any other book. It's not a Bible with super thin pages and, you know, a size four and a half font with a bunch of footnotes and eight columns and all that stuff. It's meant to be, they pick it up and there's wide margins and there's a nice font and it's like a book, like a chapter book. Um, And for me, at least, I mean, working on Good Catholic, I'm reading stuff at least adjacent to the faith all the time, which is a great blessing. But one of the obstacles there is that I can let it go in one ear and out the other. Or if I'm reading scripture or even if I'm at mass, I can think about, oh, I can write about that. Or, oh, I, I, could, I could make a blog about that, or I can talk about that in this thing, and I'm not listening to it or reading it for me in my life. Um, and so having in this particular edition, which I got fairly recently because I didn't know about it, but I, I picked it up, and I was able to just like immediately fall right into the story of the Acts of the Apostles. And I don't know what it is about it. Just I, I'm someone who reads a lot to begin with. Like I read a lot of fiction. And so seeing it on the page like a book, like a storybook almost, made it just like pop in my imagination and like be there rather than thinking like, oh, the Acts of the Apostles and Apostolic Succession and how can I teach someone about this on goodcatholic.com? No, it was just like I was, I was there and I was able to kind of enter into it in a new way 
which is something I really needed lately. So that's awesome. That's, that's my awesome. Of the now, week. now I know they the the pages being thin is so that they could fit the whole Bible, which is basically a library yeah. into like one book. Like, how does this work? Is there so volumes? I think I think there are two volumes right now, and it's the Gospels and Acts in one volume. That's what I I've got, and I gotcha. think there's another one that's like the Epistles and maybe Revelation too. So, so it's not the so whole basically Bible. it ends up being like a library. Yeah, I mean, if you were to buy the whole thing, I don't know if there are additions for the whole thing. If the like all of the books of the Bible are printed this way or not, I don't think so. Um, but but yeah, so it's just just a piece. Gotcha. Cool. 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 Um, my bean of the week is. Uh, Alex's goatee. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I appreciate that, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I was telling him before we recorded, uh, his goatee reminds me of the late 1990s. Uh, you know, uh, anyway, I'm moving on. Uh, my, my bean <laughs> of the week, my bean of the week is actually the Hillbilly Thomists. Okay. So I've Peter, have you, the, had you ever heard, heard of, of these guys, but I don't know what they are. Well, they are Dominicans. <laughs> That's right. why they're Thomas. Um, but they are Dominicans who have a special set of skills, and that isn't like chasing down people in Europe. Um, their special set of skills is playing bluegrass. Ooh. And, you know, everyone loves a group of religious, whether it's like religious sisters or religious brothers or a group of priests playing like in like a music video, you know? You're just kind of uh, like, oh, yeah, I'm Catholic. That's awesome. But these guys actually got some chops, you know? It's not, it's not just kitschy. It's not cliche. It's, it's not, it's not good token. It's not because they're wearing habits. Absolutely. Like I've right. really enjoyed their songwriting. And so they just play bluegrass uh, music. They have one album that's mostly like bluegrass standards that they're covering. Mm -hmm. And then their recent one, um, songs from the other side, um, is some of their own stuff. I love that name. Sorry. Songs from the other side. Because it's like, you got the vinyl record analogy. You got the heaven and earth analogy that that's great. I want to make sure that's the name of the album. Hold on. <laughs> if it isn't, it should be. Oh, it's not. It's oh, not. No. Uh, yeah, I know. It's a new album. is called Living for the Other Side, which is kind of still the announcement. Okay. All right. It's, it's yeah. almost there. It's there. Okay. So, but um, yeah. And so it's great, great songs. Um, I love particularly there's one called uh, Bourbon, Bluegrass, and the Bible. The three Bs. Some would say... The three most necessary bees, um, but not really. But I love I love the music. Hillbilly the three Thomas. Most necessary bees for a really good Saturday afternoon. That's it. That's it. Especially um, during COVID tide. Just throw on a bluegrass album, pour some bourbon. Read read your the, Bible. Read, the Bible. read your Catholic readers Bible. Um, I thought their name just came from like playing bluegrass and being Dominicans, but there's actually a quote from Flannery O'Connor. Which Flannery O'Connor said, "Everybody who has read Wise Blood, which is her only novel, uh, thinks I'm a hillbilly nihilist, whereas I'm a hillbilly Thomist." Which I, like I thought that. was really awesome. I like that. So anyway, the proceeds from album sales, donations, and merchandise sales support the formation of friars at the Dominican House of Studies in Washington D.C. Who doesn't want to do that? Listen to some great bluegrass and help form future Dominicans. So that's all I have for this episode. Alex, you got anything? Got a bean? You know, I didn't come prepared today, but I will next time. I think my bean for the day might have to be my goatee. Just claim it. Claim, it. claim it. I'll just claim it. I'm claiming yeah. it right now. And and just keep going. And no matter who's giving you grief about it, is someone is in your life you giving you grief? I, Br Father Brad, I think you're the only one giving me grief about it. I'm, this is not grief. This is high praise. I, I'm trying to uh, affirm you and support your, your facial hair structure. It's way better than Nick's. Yeah, the honestly, stash. mine is much better than Nick's. Man. Okay, it's a it's a circle, you know. It's like it's like Trinitarian. Nyx is just a Where line. Does it begin? Where does yeah, it end? yeah, exactly. There's really no telling. <laughs> You've been listening to Coffee Talk with me, Father Brad, and our resident good Catholics, Peter Gone and Alex Mersch. Coffee Talk is brought to you by the Catholic Company and is part of the Good Catholic Podcast Cooperative. If this episode has blessed you, you can find more content at www.goodcatholic.com/slash 
podcast where you can see the other offerings Good Catholic has. Um, As always, we ask that you leave a review, a rating, share the pod with a friend, or simply pray for us and our mission. To quote the psalmist, taste and see that the Lord is good. Continue to drink deeply from our great faith. We'll talk next week. Peace. Thank you, Father.